Hey guys, and thanks for joining the journey again. My name is Jason Pizzino. We're gonna cover Polkadot today. It's been a fantastic investment for us over the last several weeks. We got in through the accumulation zone, We're just seeing some breakouts again on high volume. So I thought it'd be a great opportunity to revisit Polkadot and see what we are looking at from here. So if you find value from the content, let me know in the comments down below. Also hit the like button if you do find some value and consider subscribing to the channel. YouTube has a way of shadow banning cryptocurrency content at the most difficult times. So be sure to hit that bell notification icon and hit all as well. Let's see if we can get the channel to 50,000 subscribers and follow this journey all the way through till the end and beyond, provided we don't get wrecked. That's why we're here looking at the charts. The fundamentals, nothing has changed. We can go through all of the news articles and I do love to do that. Nothing at this point for Polkadot has changed. Nothing critical. We're seeing breakouts, we're seeing a lot of good stuff and it's showing on the charts. That's why we keep to the charts and clear off the noise of the news. The news is very interesting and all that sort of stuff. Focus on the charts. What we see here is a swing playing out on a larger time frame. We don't have much data for Polkadot. It only goes back to August. Reminder, I've got it on a three-day chart. I'm using bars, right? I'm not using candlesticks. I'm not using the, these pretty green and red candlesticks. I want to use bars and I've changed the colors to white. Why do I do that? So it, you can see the difference between the black background. Not only that, the green and the red are only based on the previous day's closing price. And I don't think that's a great representation of how to view a chart. I like using swings and a swing is when a day or a bar, whatever it is, whatever time frame you're looking at, uh, we want to look at the high price and the low price, right? So that is going to determine when the swing occurs in the chart. You can see here we got a high, higher high, higher high, inside bar, higher high. Now this day becomes lower. So that causes a swing in our chart. That's what we want to look for because that gives us stop placements and entry placements. That's why it's so important to look at a swing chart. Sure, there are plenty of people doing candlestick charting and it works for them, that's great. It, you just gotta work with what works with you, what suits your eyes the most. Do bars suit your eyes? You can color code these if you want, or do candles. So that's really the heavy part of it. I, I figured a lot of people uh, are sort of new to that area and it is showing on the channel. There are a lot of new guys, so thank you very much. I'll try and add in a little tip when it comes to trading on a lot of the videos. The next thing I'm looking at is the volume and we see accumulation through here. How do we find accumulation, right? How do we, how do we know it's there? Essentially, I like to find it and identify it as lowering volume. We wanna see the volume begin to lower over time, which means supply is getting eaten up. Then we see a couple of little tests like this. We see the market try to rally on some higher volume. It gets knocked back down, meaning that the buyer, the sellers are coming in and they're selling to the market. They think six bucks is a good price to sell out. So they're getting rid of their stock. Next thing, market is falling. You can see it fall through here, but also the volume is falling, which means the supply is drying up. All of that selling is not going anywhere. It's basically being eaten up and there's not much supply left, I should say. And uh, you've got a swing, little higher swing, little higher swing, volume's increasing and the market then shoots up from there. That is a classic accumulation zone. There's a lot of tests in here to see if there is any more supply on the market. That's what you've got to do as a whale. You can't just push this thing straight up if there is still supply on the market. So if there are still people willing to sell at $7, you can't just go and buy up everything to try and push this thing all the way up. You need to trick people. You need to trick all of these new investors or even old dumb money, it doesn't really matter, old, smart, new, young money. If you're the whales in this, you want to be able to take all of that accumulation before you make your move. This is just old school Wyckoff theory. So that's how the whales do it. That's typical accumulation. Then we get the breakout. That's an entry. That's a safe entry because we've broken out above this test high and it's on high volume. You'd really want to see high volume come in to get that price to move. It's like a rocket ship. We wanna see that really launch nice and heavy. So what we're seeing after that is a little bit of reversal, probably a sellout, take some profits, $10. Where were they buying? Well, maybe they averaged in at five bucks. 
They've now just gotten 100% return. Why wouldn't you take that? Get your initial capital back and then see where the rest goes. It seems pretty straightforward, right? You throw a thousand bucks in here, your thousand's now 2,000, sweet. Sell it off, get my initial back, then let's see where the market goes from there. If it sold off and came back down, wasn't time yet, doesn't matter. I got my initial supply back and now I've even got some extra to see where the market goes from this point. So you're playing with the market's money. All right, next point is we see the volume decline through these top levels. Sure, it increased here, but that was the capitulation low that we saw the other day on Bitcoin dumping and everyone got scared. What's happened since then? A couple of days later, a few days later, market has broken these highs. Now, I'm not sold on this being the final break. Maybe we go above and come back below and start to accumulate again. But if we do see this push up even stronger, then sure, that might be the final break. And from that point, we may see it just round off again and come back and find some support on that high. So, you know, up, 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 maybe back down, find some support and just keep working our way higher. That would be ideal, what I want to see on DOT, then play out another reaccumulation zone at higher numbers before we take off again. So this stepping stone is definitely what I want to see in a long-term crypto that I'm holding or stock. It doesn't really matter. That's, that's the pattern that we want to look for. Accumulation, high volume breakout, reaccumulation again, another breakout. That's ideal, all right? So for DOT, I like to look at that. The US dollar value is looking good. Let's take a quick look at DOT versus BTC because at the end of the day, we wanna make sure we're increasing our BTC holdings as well. We just don't wanna be buying something and it going up in dollar value, but our Bitcoin is dropping. That would just be pointless. We would have been better off just holding Bitcoin. DOT, looking good. This is why I was getting into DOT at those slightly higher levels. Sorry to go back to this, but I was happy getting into DOT here at 678 and then reloading here at seven again because on the dot BTC chart, I see a low forming here. Nice high volume, we're starting to get a breakout. It looks good. We're getting above the 23% level that was put in through the top to the bottom. That's a real bearish area. So it's a bit difficult. But right now, dot BTC is looking good. This is looking like a fantastic setup. Maybe we'll see again some sideways stuff before we start to head up. Overall, I definitely want to see it close above 34,000 sats. That would be the level of uh, safety, you know, because we've got a high here, we've got another high here, low here, right through the guts there. We can get a close above this level. We're even safer, but this is where the bigger gains are made. And I can see some signs of the market moving up from here. Here's some volume, here's some more volume. Nice swing up. We've got a lower, uh, a higher low and we're waiting to see a higher high to turn the trend up. Polkadot looking good against BTC. I like to look at that. I've been doing all of this analysis on a three day chart because I'm not day trading this stuff. Not on the minute chart, not on the 15 minute chart. Don't screw around with that stuff. You're almost bound to lose. Over 80% of traders lose. You'll probably be one of those statistics. Sorry to be a downer on that. Let's give ourselves the best opportunity to make the most money. Don't make things difficult for ourselves. Last chart I wanna look at is DOT ETH. Because why would we be holding DOT if Ethereum is going to increase as well? So this is our kind of hedge against Ethereum as much as Ethereum is our hedge against Bitcoin. So we definitely wanna see DOT increasing against Ethereum and increasing against Bitcoin. So this is the best of all worlds. And at the moment, it is starting to move its way up. The lows aren't getting higher yet, the highs, Sure, we got a nice big push out here against Ethereum. That was when Ethereum dumped and uh, DOT didn't dump, but it actually uh, went up nice and strong, which was these last couple of days here, DOT BTC. It was these days right over here and Ethereum wasn't doing anything. So that's how the DOT ETH chart looks with this uh, big spike out of the low. Now again, high volume, looking all right. I think this low will hold. If it doesn't, it won't be broken by much 
at this point from what I can see here. That can change, of course, but I've got to take all of these probabilities to then make my decision to either go into dot heavier at these lows or not. And I like the look of this chart pattern. The, the downtrend, I think, will eventually be completely broken. But for now, this, this uh, short-term downtrend, I think, has been broken. So we can look at that down. That's that first break, retest coming out of it. So even dot ETH is looking strong. That checks all my boxes. I like dot ETH, I like dot BTC, and of course dot USD is going to uh, replicate that as well because of the BTC value. So overall, that's my update for Polkadot. Been getting in since that five, six, seven area. A Little bit in eight, reinvested again in the $7 area as we tanked a few days ago. Uh, that was on the USD pair, so straight down here. This isn't a bad area as well. I'll leave, it, I'll leave you guys with that. Because it's broken the highs, that's a confirmation. Look at some stops, probably down this way. That's where I would leave it on DOT. I think overall it's gonna be a fantastic project and that's why I'm invested in DOT. You can see the rest of the charts there. Go and review the video if you need to. Uh, consider subscribing to the channel if you've stuck around this long and hit the all, bell notification and all so you can see the content as it's released. Uh, hit the like button as well if you found some value from it. I'll see you guys at the next videos. Be sure to check out the other videos on the channel, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin. I'm going to be covering all of the majors that I am actually investing in as opposed to continuing to try and do way too many. So stick around. Let's invest in these. Happy bull market 2021. I'll catch you at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done.